is up you guys welcome back to my channel my name is Dominique if you are new and if you are not new welcome back to another video and if you have not already make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button that is located down below also make sure you turn on the bell so you can be notified whenever I upload as you can see from the title down below today I'm going to be doing a highly requested video which is all about anatomy and physiology so without further ado if you are interested in hearing tips and tricks on how I pass both anatomy one and two lecture and lab with all A's then just keep watching so please do not mind if you guys see me looking down it is because I do have some notes written because I did not want to miss anything or leave anything out so I asked you guys both on YouTube and on Twitter to please send me questions that you guys had regarding anatomy and physiology any concerns you may have and the top questions that I got were how do I retain information how do you understand it what is the best way to study anatomy and physiology? And did you fully complete AMP before taking the T's? For those of you who are not aware, the T's is one of many entrance exams that schools may require for you to take in order for you to apply for the nursing program. Now, just to clarify, I personally did not take the T's. I did take the HESI. It is the same thing as the T's, whereas it is an entrance exam and it has an array of subjects. So like grammar, anatomy and physiology, microbiology, um, it was math and stuff like that. So those are the top questions that I received when I asked you guys to please leave down any questions and concerns you may have regarding anatomy and physiology. So I'm going to go through each question and answer them and give you guys some tips and some tricks. So the first question I'm going to go ahead and answer is, did you complete anatomy and physiology before taking the T's, which in my case is the HESI? And the answer is yes and no so I did go ahead and take the HESI before completing anatomy 2 I did fully complete anatomy 1 but I did not complete anatomy 2 before I took the HESI and the reason why is because I wanted to dip my feet in the water I wanted to see what I was up against I wanted to see how the questions were worded what they were going to be asking me and things like that so the best advice to give you guys regarding this is to each its own I would highly suggest if you have the time, if you have the money, then I would go ahead and try out your nursing school interest exam before completing the class. But if you do not have the resources to take the exam, as the exam may have a price, I believe my HESI exam was... $50 please don't quote me it's been so long but um, I did have to pay to take my HESI exam so if you had the extra money I would go ahead and try to you know just get a feel for what they're going to ask you because if anything what if you pass the very first time that you go in there when you were just testing the waters then you don't have to worry about it and that is exactly what happened to me so the very first time that I took the HESI just to test and see how it is I actually passed so when I went ahead to take it again, of course I got a higher grade and it was because I already knew what they wanted to know and I had completed anatomy two, which is a more advanced anatomy, of course. However, I do want to tell you guys to be very careful with the timing. I'm not sure how everyone's nursing program is set up, but my nursing program, of course, required for you to take and pass the HESI before applying. So if you have the time to, you know, dip your feet in the water and see how it is, then I would definitely do it. But if if not then I would highly recommend that you go ahead and finish the full course before going into your school's nursing entrance exam so the next question that I got was how do you retain information so as you guys know both anatomy and physiology one and two are very vocab heavy it's a lot of things that you must remember it's a lot of muscles you have to remember bones you have to remember nerves I know trust me I did it I know I feel you I know so I came up with this little acronym to help you retain information and the acronym that I came up with is RMV R stands for repetition M stands for mnemonics and V stands for visuals repetition mnemonics and visuals that is how you will retain information in both anatomy and physiology one and two so i'm going to dig into more of rmv when i say repetition what do i mean by repetition anatomy and physiology just as many other science-based classes like microbiology even your upcoming nursing classes is going to require you to retain information and of course hold all that information in not only for your test but 
for the rest of your life you guys have to remember anatomy and physiology is your foundation i cannot stress this enough it is your foundation it is your groundwork it is the base of nursing school so i really need you guys to understand and get a grip on anatomy and physiology because this is your foundation for nursing school so back to rvm repetition repetition is the action of repeating something that has already been said or written so what do i mean by this I simply mean when you have some type of vocabulary, when you have homework, I need you guys to go home and repeat it. There is no reason why you should be coming from anatomy and physiology class and closing your book and that's just the end of it. No, I need you guys to repeat that same information when you get home. Repeat that same information before you go to class the next time. When you constantly repeat something to yourself, it sticks. And even when you guys think it's not sticking, it's going to stick subconsciously. So I need you guys to continually go over the same thing. And just as I'm pretty sure your professors have said it, it is not going to stick overnight. You are not going to remember all of the bones overnight. You are not going to remember all of the nerves overnight. You're just not. I'm going to be very honest with you. You're not. So you need to constantly repeat it. That is one of the ways that you retain information is by repeating it. Say it out loud. Sit in a mirror. Talk to yourself. One of the ways that I love to repeat things is get a voice recording of you saying it. Listen to it on the way to school. Listen to it on the bike. Listen to it on the treadmill. Listen to it walking your dog. Something. Some other things that I love to do as far as repetition is definitely flashcards. You guys know I swear by flashcards. I am a paperless student, but I told you guys the number one thing that I will not get rid of are my flashcards that is personally what works for me if I have my flashcards I will literally go through them so quick and it's because I want it to come to my brain like this and it's funny and I'm gonna tell you guys this right now when I go into a test I'm probably like the third or the fourth person that gets out of that test and sometimes I think it's because I did so wrong when really it's not it's because I've been sitting there repeating this information that when I see it my brain is just firing and that's how I want you guys to be and that is how you would get that way if you constantly see the material get on top of repeating the information so as I've said I do love flashcards but I also love the online flashcards on Quizlet and that's a number one question that I get as well is do you use Quizlet and the answer is yes if you aren't familiar with what Quizlet is, it is pretty much like an online flashcard app. You can create your own flashcards and you can just look at them on your phone. And that's what I like to do. I like to create my own set sometimes when I have the time to create them and just go through them. Same thing on a road trip, walking your dog, take your dog to the dog park. You have your phone. Why aren't you going through your Quizlet? So before I get off the topic of Quizlet, I'm going to go ahead and insert my Quizlet username right here because that is a question that I always get is if you use Quizlet what is your Quizlet username so here it is right here on the screen also I'm going to go ahead and recommend a video to you guys I would highly recommend after you are finished with this video I would go ahead and watch my how I create effective flashcards for nursing school video I sat down and I walked you guys through how I personally make flashcards for school that video is a part of a three-part series that I made for you guys the very first video that I made was how I study in nursing school the second one was how do I take notes and the third one is how do I make effective flashcards for nursing school so after you finish this video I would highly recommend that you go over and take a look at that playlist I'll go ahead and drop them all in the description box down below in order so you know you can go ahead and watch them and maybe get some new ideas moving on with RVM the next letter is M M stands for mnemonic. A mnemonic is a device such as a pattern of letters, ideas, or associations that assist in remembering something. This is one of the main ways that I've gotten thus far is mnemonics. A mnemonic is a great way to remembering things. The most effective mnemonics are funny and dirty i'm just gonna be very honest with you and when i say dirty i mean inappropriate so when it comes to mnemonics i of course want you guys to take note of the ones that your professors give you your teachers i also want you to google some and i want you guys to come up with some of your own and i believe the ones of your own is probably the best because it's personal you know you can make it as funny as you want it to be you can make it as inappropriate as you want it to be but definitely utilize mnemonics especially in anatomy and physiology 
I have an example of a mnemonic today and it's based off of a question that I got is how do you remember all of the nerves and I remember this mnemonic because I used it in school I promise you you will remember it I'm gonna go ahead and insert it on the screen so please take a screenshot you can definitely use this please also like I said go ahead and Google mnemonics for things that you may need help remembering or just go ahead and make up your own now the second mnemonic that I have for you guys is to help you remember whether those cranial nerves were motor sensory or both and the mnemonic is some say marry money but my brother says big brains matter most but to make it more funny I had switched brains out for butts because I was like okay you know how guys like butts I was like say marry money but my brother say big butts matter most and last but not least with R and V is V which stands for visuals a visual is a picture piece of film or display used to illustrate or accompany something now I've already told you guys I am a very very visual learner you can tell me something I can read it a million times but until I see a picture or I can visualize it happening or I can see some type of movie in my head nine times out of ten it's not gonna click for me and I'm probably not going to remember it and that is how I retain information in anatomy and physiology both one and two so definitely find visuals for whatever topic you are studying nine times out of ten when you go inside of that test that visual is going to pop up in your head and just like how I told you guys to repeat like worded information also repeat those visuals because when you sit down in that test those colors will pop up back into your head and you'll be like oh yeah I remember this happened and this happened especially in a video moving on to the next question that I got how do you understand anatomy and more specifically she asks how do you understand anatomy because usually they ask you what happens if something is not working and let me tell you guys this right now this is not the first time you will see these type of questions in nursing school you will typically see questions structured as what happens if this is not working now that is not how it's structured they're not gonna say it like that but that is pretty much what you're gonna pull from that question and you need to walk yourself through it the number one way to understand is to understand how something works when it is working normally that way you can use critical thinking to walk yourself through a problem this is what I need you guys to understand so with that being said I'm gonna give you guys an example let's just talk about the pancreas now I want you guys to answer this question before I even answer it what is the pancreas's function pause the video answer the question and come back okay good now if one of your answers were it converts food into fuel by excreting insulin then great so in anatomy and physiology you will learn that one of the major functions of the pancreas is to excrete insulin so with that being said we can already say if there is an issue with the pancreas then what are we going to have an issue with we are going to have an issue with the excretion of insulin if we have a problem with the excretion of insulin what happens now what does insulin do insulin is the key to get glucose inside of cells so what does that mean the glucose is sitting in the bloodstream so when we take someone's blood sugar we're gonna have a high reading if you can tell me the basic function of something you can critically walk your way through a problem and getting a little bit more into depth and don't worry if you don't know all of this yet you will learn in probably your first semester of nursing school like I did if someone has a high reading of blood sugar then they're going to have some symptoms and the symptoms are the three polys they're gonna have polyuria which is they're gonna pee a lot they're gonna have polyphagia they're gonna be hungry why because they have sugar in their blood but it's not getting inside of those cells why because the insulin is not there why because we have a problem with the pancreas you see how I just walked you guys through that this is how I want you guys to be able to think I want you guys to be able to critically think your way through problems and the first step is to understanding what the basic function is and again the number one way to remember the basic functions inside of both anatomy and physiology one and two is R and V that is something that I came up with for you guys 
repetition, mnemonics, and visuals. The last question is, how do you study anatomy and physiology? And my answer is the same tips that I've been telling you guys. Always do your homework before class. So what I mean by homework is I need you guys to read your lessons before going to class. I want you guys to have questions before you even see the professor. I need your class time to be a review to yourself because you already went over that work at home. Class time is not the time for you to be just now opening and seeing that lesson. I need class time to be a review to you and a time for you to hear other people's answers and for you to ask your professor questions specific to things that you needed help on. Other tips include study in your groups. Find a study group. Of course, be careful of what people and how many people you have in your group, but I 100% support study groups. Other tips include getting creative. Create poster boards if you have to. Go on Pinterest if you have to. Whatever you need to do to understand, I want you guys to do it. I need you guys to go out of your way, utilize all of your resources, see if they have tutors at your school. And I always tell you guys this, when you pay tuition, you are pretty much paying those tutors that are at your school. So do not ever feel bad for going to a tutor. They are there to help you and they literally cry out for people that need help to come in another tip is make sure you understand your learning style I always tell you guys I am a visual person I am a hands-on person but some people don't need that like how I'm telling you guys RMV some people don't need V some people do not need visuals some people can hear things and they're good to go so you need to understand your learning style I would definitely go on Google and take like a little learning styles quiz. This is very helpful and it's very good to know because now you know what resources you need to pull to better help you understand subjects. Last but not least, I not only want you guys to recognize, but I want you guys to acknowledge both your strengths and your weaknesses. I want you to zoom in on your weaknesses. And I say this because when you know what you are weak in, you can work on it. Zoom in on exactly what you don't understand. Try to create a very specific question of what you are not understanding because the more in tune you are with what you don't get, the more specific you are, the better that someone or something can answer your question. But Golden Bays, that is gonna go ahead and conclude my video. I hope this video helped. I'm really excited to get this video out for you guys before the fall semester starts. Again, if you guys have any questions, the comments is always open if you guys ever see someone else commenting and I probably didn't get a chance to get around to it or if I even answered it and you have an answer for it too feel free to comment on someone else's comment guys we are a community I'm here for you guys and I really really want to create a community where we are all here for each other so again if you see someone who asks a question and you may know the answer please feel free to go ahead and comment. My DMs are always open. And of course, in these trying times, I hope you guys are staying safe and staying healthy. Stay blessed and make sure you remember to pray.